there was an old Star Trek movie where um, the uh, Enterprise actually gets destroyed and uh, they make a new one for by the time of the next movie. Uh, sorry if that was a spoiler alert, but I figure if you haven't watched it by now, you're never going to watch it. Um, <laughs> And one of the first scenes in the movie, you have Captain Kirk sitting in the chair going, I miss my old chair. I miss my bullpen. I know where my water's supposed to be, where my glasses are supposed to be, and if I want to dance, you'll never know it. All of it hides that. Now i got to be careful what I how many steps I take back here, so, so much for Fitbit. No, actually, I don't do that. Rosie does, I don't. Well, every week on Thursday, if I remember, I usually call Alice and give her the title for the next, for the Sunday sermon. Because um, believe it or not, sometimes the title is one of the hardest things to come up with. Uh, you know what the verses are supposed to be, you know what you want to say, but it's like, what do I do? I love this week. wonder how many of you have looked at it. And finally, we are going to wrap up First Timothy. Um, most of you... Uh, I have known ministers and pastors who have taken literally years on going through a book of the Bible. I'm not one of the short ones, but some of the longer ones, they take like forever. Well, I work with children, and the reason I'm a decent children's worker is because I usually lose interest as fast as they do. And maybe you we're fine, but I was ready to be done with First Timothy. Uh, that's why the title. I think we've covered it well, but you know, I may have missed a verse or two or something. Uh, but I feel we covered it well. We're going to finish up with what Paul, his last words to Timothy, and I find them very, very interesting because it's nothing new. Timothy has recirc Paul has recircled to hit two subjects that he's already covered and has already covered well. So for some reason he feels that in the closing of his letter, now we understand guided by the Holy Spirit, but in the closing of his letter, this is what he wants to say. We find it in verses 17 through 21. Allow me to read the first couple of verses. Verse 17, 1 Timothy chapter 6. Instruct those who are rich in this present world not to be conceited or to fix their hope on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly supplies us with all things to enjoy. <clears throat> Instruct them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous, and ready to share, storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of that which is life indeed. So, in the closing remarks, his, his first thought, his first advice, instruction, or final is again on riches, on possessions, on worldly wealth. Now, he just covered it um, back at the beginning of chapter 6, and he covered it in great detail. But he just wants to put in that last little thing. You see, what Timothy was dealing with is Ephesus was an extremely wealthy city. It was one of the metropolises of the Roman Empire. Ephesus is where people wanted to be. I'm finding that uh, 
a lot of times the cities that were the greatest were the ones that needed the most help. Corinthian, Corinth, for example, fantastic city. When you think of Corinth, think of New York or Los Angeles or Chicago. Corinth was one of the largest, had most problems. Ephesus is one of the wealthiest, one of the most stateless. Um, think of what's that? No, don't think of what's that. A um, little bit bigger than that. Uh, it was a stable city, but very, very wealthy. So, consequently, a lot of the Christian, um, Christian members of the church were going to be wealthy. There were going to be slaves, but there were also going to be the rich. And so, Paul advises Timothy to deal with wealth, not to ignore this, that um, having wealth brings on a great responsibility. And a lot of times, people just want to know what to do. If they're told, they respond. That happens so often. And so Paul was saying, Timothy, talk to your people about it. Don't make this a subject that you just ignore. Because, now this is me adding, Paul's probably thinking, because I know in your church, there are people with possessions that want to do something good for God, and they just don't know. And so Paul gives the, the instruction. Now, how I want to cover this is um, just some key ideas that we're going to find in these verses as opposed to word for word, phrase by phrase. So Paul is saying in verses 17 and 18, do not let riches blind you to God's values. One of the dangers of, of wealth is that the eyes are taken off of God and put on the wealth. The trust comes in wealth. I like some of our, uh, especially the uh, responsive reading, in God <laughs> trust. People with wealth tend to trust in wealth. Even Christians, yes. Um, um, the numbers are not as important as, as the idea, but for every 500 people who can handle poverty, only one can handle wealth. It's much easier to handle um, lack of than it is abundance of. I think this is one of the reasons Jesus talked a lot about it. It's found in Proverbs over and over again um, and in Paul's writings. So wealth tends to blind us to God's values. We look more on the here and now than in the future. If it replaces God in a person's life, that's when it becomes dangerous. Now, I do want to emphasize that nowhere Jesus Proverbs, Paul's writing, is wealth ever condemned? It's okay to have wealth. It's okay to have money. It's okay to have stuff. The whole, the whole of what? I tell you, I feel so exposed. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm actually conscious of how much I moved down here. That now you're all going to be watching my way. I shouldn't have said it. Um, but I'm conscious of it. Um, nowhere is it condemned. But all through Scripture, there are warnings. Because that's the danger. And so, um, basically, riches should not shift our priority uh, from loyalty to God, to loyalty to 
our well. And so that's what Timothy is being instructed to do. And we're given a list of things within verses 17 to 19, and that's how I want to handle this. I want to handle it as a list. Uh, so if you're looking for word, 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 then you're not going to get it. But if you want the ideas, here they are from 17 to 19. If you have been blessed with wealth, then, one, thank the Lord. Be grateful for what he has given. Now here's the interesting thing. He knows he can trust you with it. I remember the story of um, J.C. Penney, and some of you younger ones are going, who? Because uh, he's been, most of his stores have closed, he's been dead for years. But J.C. Penney did not tie, he was a Christian, did not tie. He just gave to God. And by the time his chain was added to Zenith, J.C. Penney had made the decision that of his profits, after all bills had been paid, of his profits, he would only take one dollar from every store. The rest of the profits went to God's work. Well, in its Zenith, its high point, J.C. Penney had over 3,000 stores. God could trust him. So, when we are given, as God blesses us, remember to thank the Lord, because that's where it comes from. Number two is don't be proud or conceited. That's putting the trust in well, sometimes rich people tend to see themselves as better than others because they have more. Basically, it's all, uh, and we'll come back to this again and again, it's a proper attitude. Uh, I want you to remember the parable of the rich man that Jesus told. Uh, the Bible tells us, Jesus talking, that there was a man who had much grain. And he said, look at what my hand has done. I will tear down my barns. I will build bigger barns to store all of my grain. And then I can say to myself, soul, look at what you have done. Take life easy, eat, drink, enjoy life, because I have much stored up for a long, long time. Now that was my paraphrase and obvious <clears throat> emphasis. And you know what God called them? You fool. Your life is required Tonight, seated, pride, me. And God said, according to that parable, uh -uh. that's not the way it is. One, thank the Lord. Two, don't be proud. Three, don't trust in your money. <clears throat> that also happens to those who have abundance. Oh. Just as a side note, what constitutes wealth? Uh, now, i, I got to admit, I have trouble with this definition. Uh, I read it. I understand it. But I have trouble with it. Anything that you have that is more than food, clothing, and shelter is wealth. It's luxury. It's not necessary. I have trouble with that one. Um, I'm not a tech person, but I don't think 
I can get along without the cell phone. I don't think that's well. The car, I don't think that's well. But you take the definition and run with it whatever direction you want to go. Um, but in the strictest sense of the word, well is anything that is above <coughs> three basic necessities, food, clothing, and shelter. But there we have it. Too many times, though, people trust in the extras instead of God. Uh, I don't know if you remember, and I forget the year, but um, the stock market took a nosedive and people lost a lot. Christians that had their uh, retirement funds, they got wiped out. Now, there was nothing wrong with investing, but the important thing is trust God because he can do things better than any investment. And so we trust God, not our money. Number four, use the money to do good. Now, I want to mention something here, and I'm going to throw in the next, the other one, which is be generous, and the next one, ready to share. I'm going to throw those three together. Use your money for good, be generous, be ready to share. They're all found in these verses. Um, we also need to let God lead us as we do this. The attitude is to have an open heart towards the needs of others. That's what Paul is saying. However, you and I cannot take care of every situation that happens. We just can't. I don't know about you, but in the mail, almost every day I get advertisements groups that need help. And they're good groups. Be the Holocaust survivors, help the poor, um, Jewish evangelism, Bibles to China, translating God's word. I see they're all good. They're all good. But who do you give to? This is the one, one of the things I want to encourage you concerning this. You can't do everything. Let God lead you to what He wants you to do. Sometimes you're going to have to hear the person talk or read the note, letter. And you're going to have to say, not how God's leading me. What you're doing is good, but that's not for me. I mean, I've had it happen in my life where um, some people support me, <coughs> others do not. Both groups got the exact same information. Both groups know exactly. The Lord leads us in different ways, and that's the beauty of it. Because we have, we're diverse, we're so many, that God will lead us in different ways. Um, maybe you're very, very passionate about Scripture and getting the Bible out to people. And so you'll tend to help those groups. Maybe think, the Jewish people, God's chosen ones, because that's even one of the name of one of the groups, you know, I think they need a lot of help. Get the idea? You don't have to feel guilty because you can't help everyone. You want to, if I may quote scripture, be rich in good works, use my money, to do good, be generous, I want to share, I am ready to share, because God has blessed me, I want to bless others. 
a hard attitude is right. So stand back and let God show you what to do. As you will. And that's all Paul was saying. Timothy, instruct your people for these things. Because the key is not how much money you have, but what you do with it. As you let God control, be sensitive to his leading, then everything will be fine. Those who truly need help will be helped. You have not put a high priority on wealth, but on God. The value system is, is correct. And, um, and so uh, that's as Paul's teaching. And again, uh, in the course of sharing well, the Bible tells us, store up for yourself treasure in heaven where rust and moth cannot destroy and thief cannot break in and steal. Um, as you know, you've probably heard many, many times, you can't take it with you. Look to the eternal instead of the present. Do we enjoy what God has given us? It says so right there. God has given us all things to enjoy. But within that, it says, look to eternity, not to the present. Verses 20 and 21 uh, goes back to something that Paul actually stated very early in his letter, where he is warning Timothy about false doctrines, and he seems to want to conclude with it. Look at what it says in verse 20, and I found this amazing because, not amazing, but fascinating. He goes, oh, Timothy. Can't you hear Paul sighing? Can't you just feel <clears throat> anguish is too strong a word. There's a lesser word. But it's like, oh, Timothy, I need to just tell you this one more time. Paul's closing out the letter, and there were a number of ways he could have closed. But he added that one little, we translated it, oh, Think of it as a sigh. Oh, Timothy. And then let me read the rest. Guard what has been entrusted to you, avoiding worldly and empty chatter and the opposing arguments of what is falsely called knowledge, which some have professed and thus gone astray from the faith. The church's main responsibility is to guard and proclaim the truths of Scripture. That is our responsibility. We've talked about it before, so I won't go into great detail, but we have the doctrine, the truth. And when an individual or a group goes against that, we need to be ready to confront. If it's someone that doesn't know one way or the other, we need to be ready to proclaim, to give the truth of God. Because there are those out there who are in error. Some have just been fooled. Others, they know what they're doing. They are actively twisting scripture to their advantage. Doesn't matter whether it's a person who's <clears throat> or one who is I'm trying to think of the right word. I want to use the word diabolical, but that's a little strong too. Uh, it's on purpose. We confront. That's the church's main responsibility. And so we have to be careful that we are not um, distracted by worldly empty chatter that just means things that are not that important. The 
Pringles doctrines. The personal um, personal preferences. Too many times church members get caught up in the things that are not that important. Now, is it okay to discuss doctrine and question? Um, you don't have to answer. You know I never really want an answer. It's rhetorical. But I wonder how many of you have ever said, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask God about this. Because there's something in the scripture that's not making sense to you or something you've talked about with somebody. You know, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask God about this. I used to say that. I don't say that anymore because you know what I think is going to happen to every one of us? We're going to get to heaven and we're just going to fall down at Jesus' feet and say, Oh, thank you, I'm here. I think the questions that we have now, we're not going to really care about. One, it'll either automatically be taken care of, or two, in the view of eternity, it's not going to make that big a difference to us. But it's okay now to sit around and over your coffee and discuss things and wonder about things. But the problem comes is when you're so caught up with this that you miss the fact that you should be defending the truth and proclaiming it. That's all Paul is telling to Timothy. Timothy you have been entrusted with the truth. So avoid what is not the truth. That word entrusted actually means um, deposited. It has been put into your account. You have something over on those who claim right there, knowledge, special secrets. That was that Gnostic group that Paul had already warned about in earlier. So basically, Christians are entrusted to defend and share God's truth. Verse 21, grace to you. Now, who has Paul been writing to this whole time? Timothy. But this closing grace to you is in the plural form. Basically, Paul is saying, your entire church needs grace. It's kind of like a benediction. Timothy, grace to you all. God's unmerited favor, God's abundant blessing, God's total guidance, <clears throat> protection, and leading for everyday living. That's grace. Because it's available to everyone who belongs to Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I have come that you might have might, and that you might have it abundantly. Paul closes with Timothy. God has given us all things to enjoy. But remember, and the truth. So Paul did not say, Timothy, life's going to be easy. He didn't conclude with that. He conclude with, concluded with battle idea. There's going to be battles. But God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is there if you obey Him. So I think that a good conclusion as we have studied First Timothy is uh, not to lose sight of what we've learned. 
know God, work together in loving harmony, and share God's good news of the gospel to the world. The letter was written as a, a guide for a young pastor who was trying to organize his church, who needed fellow pastors and how to find them. And so Paul, the elder pastor, gave Timothy all the advice he needed. And he closed it with grace. We've spent the last few months going through 1 Timothy, and I thank you for your patience and for being with me through this whole time. Um, I have a minute or two, so I want to tell you the direction that I would like to go, all right? Um, the next two weeks, I'm just going to trust that God will give me some topic. I'll be praying about it and searching scripture and coming up with something, okay? That's what's going to happen. Starting in September... I want to do a series on spiritual gifts. Most people do not realize how many spiritual gifts there actually are in the scripture. They know the biggies. And God gave some of the apostles, some as teach, pastor teachers, and you know, you know, there's a list of about ten that everybody understands. So far, I have found over 26 spiritual gifts. Most of them are never talked about. And so we're going to go, I want to I wanna do this. Uh -huh. And the only way we're not going to do it is if God takes me out of the scene picture, or if you lock the door on me and don't let me in. Okay? That's the only way that I am not going to do this. Um, spiritual gifts starting in September. However, I do wish to share with what you are interested in. If there is either a subject or a book that you would like to see us cover in the future, then let me know, okay? Um, because I would be glad, this doesn't even seem to be a strong enough word, but I would be glad to share something that you're interested in as opposed to what I'm interested in. Um, so if there's something on your, on your thoughts, in your heart, something that you've been wondering about or some book you'd like to know in better detail, uh, then just let me know. You've got about a month and a half because Spiritual gifts going to take us at least the whole month of September, if not longer. Uh, so there we have it. Um, we've got to finish Timothy. We're going to keep moving forward in the study of God's Word together and um, see what God has for us in the weeks to come. Father God, we do thank you for your Holy Spirit, our teacher, and how it's through you that we do understand your Word better. How through it we do know your will better. We ask, Lord, that you might make us sensitive to that. Father, help us to be people who truly digest your word and don't just merely read it and forget it. Father, you have given us great responsibility because of your many blessings. But we need your help in carrying it out. Father, I thank you for these who are here, who are here and who have uh, shown their interest in your word and in you. May you bless them for it. I pray, Lord, uh, for any of the unseen requests that may be represented here. Thank you that you are the omniscient. Father, there are those uh, of our family who are not here. Uh, they came 
salvation. and bless them also in the area that they need it. Father, as we go out into the world, we look forward to, to what you're going to do and how we can see more. I also want to put the, the BBS this week. May you protect us from the hand of Satan. Who does not want to see children learning. Who doesn't want to see soldiers growing. Try to use different means to stop it. Father, because of your shield of faith, we look forward to going forward and that you will give us the insight that is needed to combat the enemy. Father, bring us back again next time. For all that you do, have done, and will do, we give you the glory, praise, and honor.